Conspiracy theories and mass casualty events. Name a more iconic duo. I'll wait. Just kidding. I'm not going to. I'm just going to. I'm going to keep talking. All right. First, let's talk about what we know happened this week. In the early hours of the morning of Tuesday, March 26th, a container ship known as Dolly radioed in a mayday call saying that they had lost power shortly after they left a dock in Baltimore. The ship then drifted into a support for the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing it to collapse and sending people tumbling into the Patapsco River. As of this recording, several people are still missing and presumed dead. Two people were rescued from the water, including one who actually refused medical treatment. When I first heard that, I just assumed they were some kind of badass, but a friend of mine pointed out it would be a very American story if a guy fell almost 200 feet from collapsing infrastructure only to refuse medical treatment because he doesn't want to end up bankrupt from the pharmaceutical industry. So... Yeah, but you know what? The the story's sad enough as it is. Let's just say that guy was a badass. Obviously, this was a big, scary event, and so no one really knew exactly what had happened while it was still happening. Why did the ship lose power? As of this recording, the general public still doesn't know, though authorities have begun an investigation, and they have also reassured the public that it was nothing intentional or nefarious like a terrorist attack. As I've said before, conspiracy theories thrive when fear is high and information is low. So that announcement was not enough to stop them. Men's rights activist and credibly accused rapist, but I repeat myself, Andrew Tate wisely announced that it looked like a cyber attack to him because the lights go off and it deliberately steers towards the bridge supports. You might wonder why Tate is an expert on this, but it's obvious if you think about it. Uh, He and his brother have been charged with human trafficking, so clearly they were in the process of expanding their empire to the point that they were preparing to use shipping containers to move large numbers of women to Romania, giving them a comprehensive knowledge of the shipping industry. It's like, you know, you've seen the second season of The Wire. It's it's like that. It's barely worth fact-checking because the idea that this is a terrorist attack is ridiculous at its core. What shit-ass terrorist attacks a bridge at 1.30 in the morning when the only people on it were construction workers? And a quick aside on that point, traffic was obviously minimal due to the time of day, but thanks to the ship calling in that May Day, authorities had a few precious minutes to stop people from driving over the bridge, and they actually managed to do it, uh, which is incredible. They literally saved lives. And so I rarely talk about it when cops do something good. So I I wanted to call that out. But back to the cyber attack, I have to add what cargo ship has its navigation able to be controlled over the internet, especially as it's leaving port? Is that a thing? I don't know. I'm not a human trafficker or a shipping magnate, but it, it seems implausible to me. But despite the obvious problems with this cyber attack claim, um, making it unnecessary to fact check it, fact check it we will anyway. And because I know just about nothing about any of this, let's turn to Dr. Andrew Thaler of Southern Fried Science, who points out that ship tracks are public data and the marine AIS tracks for the MV Dolly are available. There is no sharp turn towards the pylon. He then links to Sal Mercagliano of the What Is Going On With Shipping YouTube channel. And I've watched a few of his videos and I highly recommend them if you would like to actually start feeling like a maritime shipping expert. The track line here of the vessel and marine traffic uh, but this is a very gradual, it looks like it's it's kind of steering, like turning into it, but it's a perspective error that you're seeing right here. So now the vessel is moving. We see it come back in. We're going to see the power come back on again. There's the power again. Even more black smoke coming in. It's at this point we believe that they may have the engine going astern because what you're going to see is the ship is going to stop its swing to the right and steady up straight and start swinging to the left. As always, if you are watching this on YouTube instead of reading it in the transcript and you would like to learn more, you can find the full transcript and links to everything I talk about for free on my Patreon. The link directly to it is in the doobly-doo. Anyway, despite all of these issues with Andrew Tate's hypothesis, luminaries like Alex Jones have leapt on this idea anyway, Jones stating matter-of-factly, World War III has already started. Okay, Alex, sure. Then, of course, we have kooks claiming that even though we have pretty clear video evidence showing a 950,000-ton ship, 
as long as a 10-story building ramming into a bridge, surely the bridge was actually wired to explode all on its own for some reason. I'm going to show you, I just showed a video, if you go back, a, a boat crashed here, but you can see dynamite being let off at every single point. I'm going to do it again. So you have here, 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 charges, boom. On the copy before that you can clearly see it happened six or seven times. I went right down the line showing each and every fire point. But my point to this video is let's not get distracted by this here. Let's keep these videos going like they'd like us to cover, but make sure you put Diddy in it. P. Diddy. A reverse 9-11. You know, yes, we do have video of two commercial planes flying into the Twin Towers, but for extremely complicated reasons, let's pretend instead of a terrorist attack, those were actually holograms or something. And in fact, the towers fell due to explosives. By the way, if you haven't figured this out all on your own, those electric sparks you see in the video are in fact electricity that powers the lights on the bridge. The wires are breaking and sparking. How do these people think that lights on bridges light up? Is it fairy dust? Is it the ghosts of all the libs who got vaccinated and died suddenly? Is that what powers the lights on bridges? Vaccine ghosts? Which brings me to my favorite conspiracy theory, which is that wokeness caused this disaster. Breaking news, BLM convinced Baltimore to defund the police. So the three police officers left on the force were too busy with violent crime calls to show up to the Baltimore Harbor, Patapsco River, Francis Scott Key's bridge is gone, call a crisis counselor. Oh, okay, a few points. First of all, again, the cops did an incredible job. The cops were there and they did a good job saving lives. Like, give them awards. Thank you. Second, Baltimore did not, in fact, defund their police department. In 2020, uh, the Black Lives Matter protests sprung up following the murder of George Floyd. And it's true that those protests in Baltimore led to the city slashing the police budget by $22 million. One year later, they increased the budget by $28 million to about $555 million. This year, the budget was increased again to $594.5 million, or what amounts to more than $1,000 per Baltimore resident. That's what they're paying for their police department. Despite all that money, homicides in the city remain high, clearance rate is lower than ever, and corruption remains rampant. And third, let's talk logistics. How would more cops have solved this problem? Would they have been able to erect a very large crossing guard stop sign that the ship would have legally had to obey? Would they have been able to do a serious investigation that found that the ship was about to go rogue and so arrest the ship before it left port? Or would they have flung themselves into the river, forming a solid mass of drowned cops that would have stopped the 950,000 ton ship before it hit the bridge? The water under the bridge is about 50 feet deep, so even if we assume that the average Baltimore police officer is, let's give them a generous two feet deep, it would take 100 cops laying on top of each other to get to the surface, and that would just be a single layer, not nearly enough to stop a 950,000-ton ship. Um, math isn't my strong point, so if anybody wants to calculate the force and the mass and the inertia um, to figure out how many drowned Baltimore police officers, officers it would have taken to stop that cargo ship. Um, if you can just do that math and let me know in the comments, I'd really appreciate it. I'll, I'll give you a pin to the first person to work that out. All right, here's one more conspiracy. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, i.e. wokeness, caused this disaster. Shipping giant Maersk confirmed that the Dolly ship, operated and managed by Synergy Marine Group, collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland around 1.27 a.m. Synergy Marine Group promotes DEI in their company. Did anti-white business practices cause this disaster? Okay, so Synergy Marine Group is a Singaporean company. They are based in Singapore, a country which has about 2.4% white people. A Singaporean company interested in purely racial diversity would not be anti-white, would they? You fucking dingus. They would probably want to hire a few white people. Anyway, 
Those are just a few of the conspiracies I've seen flying around on this. As for what actually happened, we probably won't know until the full investigation is complete. Uh, Mercogliano mentioned that the ship has been inspected recently in the United States back in September and then in various other countries prior, and it always passed with flying colors. I've read a few studies on the matter because of course I did, and I learned that apparently the shipping industry has improved its safety record dramatically in the past decade. And these days, the most common an accident is a fire happening on board. And I have heard experts say that that may have been what happened here. Maybe there was a fire that caused this. All that said, it is worth noting that the ship was chartered by the shipping company Maersk, which was sanctioned by the Labor Department just eight months ago for retaliating against a company whistleblower and for instituting an anti-whistleblower policy that required employees to report potential safety violations to the company before alerting the appropriate authorities like the Coast Guard. Again, you know, Maersk only chartered the ship. They didn't build it, but still... That seems like relevant information that people should know about and, you know, slightly more relevant than Synergy Marine Group's supposed commitment to diversity or how many cops were on duty at the harbor that night. Come on, buddy. Oh, good boy. Yeah, I see you. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.